it looks good no problem okay let me check that one whether it is going to resolve it or not then No, it is not answering. I'm. I was expecting some answers, but it is not going to. Okay, I will try to give some different name. I'm just a little bit confused with this name itself. Okay, let me quickly create. Let us say this is xyz.com. It is private hosted zone. I want to create it for my Oregon region once again. I will not create that much entries now. I will simply create one or two entries and Pune VPC. Fine, that's all. And let me see. Whenever you create the domain uh, hosted zone, two records will automatically get created. Now let me use one www.xyz.com and for that, I will use this IP address. Let me go here, ns lookup xyz.com. Initially, it will not give me any answer. So, okay, 52.8 is giving me answer. Is that No, I guess something is very wrong here. It is just resolving. It is just finding the actual xyz.com on the internet. See, this is not my IP address. This is not my IP address. Okay. Let me check. Is it mine? It is 54.184. And what it is showing me? 52.8. This is not my IP address. Anyway, it is just giving me some wrong answers right now. Let me just uh, quickly go through this instead of wasting time. Actually, it is very interesting to look at all that stuff, how DNS works, how, how the queries are getting solved. Okay, let us start. So root 53 is Amazon's DNS server. We are going to talk about all these things. Root 53 C name, simple routing policy, weighted routing policy, latency based, failover as well as geo proximity. Now, what functions root 53 has? It We can register or transfer a domain name. We can purchase domain name from root 53 just like uh, GoDaddy, right? So if you want to purchase any domain name, you usually go to websites like GoDaddy, right? So similarly, even root 53 uh, can provide you the domain name. So there is always option of domain registration. It resolved, resolves domain name to IP addresses, root request based on latency, health checks, weights, as well as other factor and distributes traffic across region. 
so whatever we have learned i think even yesterday i have talked about this right so load balancers are just capable of forwarding the traffic to multiple availability zones in the same region but what if i want to route the traffic across the region then route 53 service has to be okay so route 53 is capable of routing the request so one web server in mumbai and one web server in singapore maybe okay so in that case it is possible Okay, root request. Now, what are these policies we are going to see? And then I will give you a, a quick demonstration as well. I will create two web server, one, one in Mumbai and one in maybe Singapore and default VPC. And then I will show you how to configure this root 53 for failover routing. Okay. So, elastic load balancing and EC2 auto scaling. So, we have seen these services. What those were doing? Uh, enable you to achieve high availability, flexibility, scalability, resilient architecture. But what if you want to distribute traffic across region? You might have various reasons for distributing traffic across region, including maybe in Singapore, you have kept your uh, disaster recovery site, right? So uh, second thing, why are you going to Singapore? But maybe there are lots of customers from Singapore region and I want to reduce their latency. I want to go closer to my users. So that could another reason, right? I, I, why I have kept my server in Singapore region maybe. So yes, there are multiple reasons. So Route 53 provides a highly available and scalable cloud DNS web service. It is designed to provide reliable and cost-effective way to route users to internet application. It translates URLs like www.example.com to the corresponding IP addresses. Route 53 connects user requests to infrastructure that is running in AWS. Examples of such, such infrastructure is, see, outside people, which are not part of AWS, how are they getting connected to the resources in our AWS? That is through the DNS server. So, infrastructure includes your EC2 instance, your load balancer, your S3 service. So, outside people might need to access this one. But how they will get connected to these resources? It is through Route 53. You can also use, use to route users to infrastructure outside AWS. What if your infrastructure from your VPC, right? So you want that server maybe to communicate with outside world, which is not AWS. So again, root 53 will be there. So right now my root 53 is behaving something like that only, right? It is just giving me answers from my VPC. It is just giving me answers of, of the outside server. So this is what they are saying here. Okay. You can use Route 53 to configure DNS health check. So that will be a good option for failover routing. Now what I can do, I can have a have two servers, okay? So let us say my infrastructure is like this. This is my Mumbai's web server and this is Singapore's web server. Now what I want all the time when, when my Route 53 is getting the request www.xyz.com, it should go to the Mumbai region only, okay? But if this server is down for any reason, then the request should be forwarded to Singapore. So how it is going to find out whether this server is healthy or not? So just like our load balancer or auto scaling group, Route 53 also has the feature of checking the health of the targets. Now these targets can be the servers, but most probably in production environment, these targets are the load balancers. Okay, because we know, this route 53 will forward the traffic to the load balancer and load balancer in turn forward it to the appropriate server. But it is not mandatory that you must have the load balancer. So in my today's demonstration, maybe I will simply use two servers without any load balancers there, right? So if this server is down, then you will see how automatically route 53 is going to route the request to the second server. Got it? This is what the failover routing is. Okay. Amazon Route 53 enables you to manage traffic globally through various routing types, including laten latency-based, geo-proximity, geolocation-based routing, and weighted round-robin policy. These routing types can be combined with DNS failover to enable a very variety of low-latency fault-tolerant architecture. Route 53 also offers domain name registration. You can purchase and manage domains such as example.com from Route 53 service in AWS. Okay. So, default DNS, why they have included this ELB right now here. Okay. AWS assigns a host name to your load balancer 
that resolves to set of IP addresses. So now there is a load balancer in my network and I want to register it in the uh, DNS. Then what I will do, I will create a record, okay? So for example, this is the DNS name of the load balancer. And now I'm mapping it with Elias record. So whenever the traffic is coming for example.com, it should be forwarded to the load balance. You got it? So see, the main domain is example.com. Whenever users are accessing the uh, web server example.com, then it should be forwarded to web app US dot this load balancer. So it assigns own host name by using the alias record set. Create C name record that points to your load balancer. So there, there can be two records, alias record as well as C name record. So C name stands for canonical name. So see, recall that load balancer distributes workloads across multiple resources such as virtual server. Using load balancer increases the availability. When you create elastic load balancer, it gets the DNS name. And you can choose to use the default DNS name or you can associate your own DNS name such as example.com maybe, okay? And then it will route the traffic to the load balance. So in C name, now what is the basic difference between C name and alias C? C name record can redirect DNS queries to any DNS record. For example, you can create C name record that redirects queries from apex.com example.com to acme.example.com to acme.example.org. So Apex means the top level domain. Okay. So whenever the queries are coming to the example.com, you want them to route to acme.example.com or acme.example.org maybe. But what is the difference? Alias. Alias record can only direct queries to selected AWS resources. Example of these resources might, might be S3 bucket, CloudFront distribution. So if I want to route the traffic to my S3 bucket, my CloudFront, or maybe my load balancer, then I can use this alias record instead of creating the C name record. So I have a good understanding between this C name record as well as alias record. It is the most, uh, uh, Important question, if you are uh, going through the interviews maybe and the examiner has decided to ask you to check your knowledge of DNS, then it will. it is a most probable question. What is the difference between C name record and alias record, right? So C name, so I want whenever the traffic is coming with www.xyz or maybe traffic is coming for xyz.com, okay? So it should get forwarded to something www.xyz.com or maybe email.xyz.com. So see, these are the subdomains of this domain. So for that, I can create the alias record. Sorry, C name record. Okay. And alias record is created if I want the traffic, which is xyz, xyz.com coming to the root 53. I want it forwarded to the cloud front DNS name. Or maybe it is the load balancer's DNS name. Or maybe it is the uh, S3 bucket's URL. Okay, so we have seen the S3 bucket URL. So what we were doing so far, we were just using the HTTPS URL, which got created for the static website, right? But what if I want to access my S3 bucket using my domain name, xyz.com, then what I will do? I will create the record for xyz.com, the alias record, and then I will forward it to the S3 bucket. Okay, so for example, if I go here, now let me just show you, although it is not working today, but let me at least show you. So for example, I want www.xyz.com. Okay, but this time I want it to be the alias record. So when I select this alias, it is asking me the traffic endpoint. Now let us say I want it to be the S3 website endpoint, right? So S3 bucket. And now here it is asking me in which region your S3 bucket is created. Let me quickly go for Oregon region. And now I can select the endpoint. So right now I don't have any bucket which is having the um, a public website. So if I just quickly go there and create a bucket, even I can show you. See, this is how. So whenever the URL is there, when we create the public website or static website for the S3 bucket, it usually gets the URL. Okay, just quickly go there. Let us try. 
okay good it should work lucky it should work okay i don't know what i did wrong it is not working in my case this is the first time it is not working okay it happens you are lucky your name is actually lucky everything is very good with your side good let me create bucket so see i am already having a bucket okay what i will do uh, let me just go for this and let me go to properties and okay it is already having right it is already having the url but in which region it is created let me check it is in oregon only so why it is not showing me there then so see folks what i am expecting now here and what is the problem i am facing see i i want the website to be accessible using www.xyz.com domain name name okay but this time i i am creating alias record now in alias record i am going to route that traffic to the end point now that end point could be my elastic beanstalk end point url load balancers end point application load balancers end point or even the s3 bucket so if i select s3 bucket i have to select the region in which that s3 bucket had created okay and then it should show me the end point now the problem today is it is even not showing me the end point here okay i don't know why it should show me let me select something here let us say i want to it fail over routing let me see whether it is showing hmm. okay i will find out why it is not working today okay so otherwise i will change my region i will demonstrate it in different region okay so with this we have just seen the difference between c name as well as alias record so these are the routing policies associated with route 53 now have a good understanding of this it is not difficult at all uh, to understand this policies okay let me quickly uh, show you what this policies are this is my route 53 okay and let us say there are two servers over here and now i have one in mumbai and one in singapore now i have used the simple routing policy simple routing simple routing uses the round robin algorithm so just like our load balancer okay so simple routing is just going to work like a load balancer one request here one request here one request here one request here okay so this is what the simple routing policy so if i create a simple routing policy my route 53 is just going to act as a load balancer but that load balancer is across the region okay so that is the simple routing policy then comes weighted routing policy now weighted routing policy is usually used in blue green deployment now let us say my mumbai region or region okay so the one which is already operating and existing it is known as blue environment but now let us say i want to entirely close my mumbai region and i want to use the singapore region so how i am going to switch that so i will click create everything in singapore okay this is just the example it is not just the web server it is not that much difficult for web server rather but just consider that it is the en entire application environment okay so initially what what was happening all the traffic was going to the mumbai region but now you are having a new region okay so initially 100% traffic was going to the mumbai region now what you can do we can have a weighted policy now in that weighted policy what what i will do i will let us say initially i will forward 90% here and 10% here then slowly 80% here 20% here maybe 70% here 30% here 60% here 40% here a time will come when 50 50 traffic will be there 50% here 50% here now i slowly want to make this environment down so 60% here 40% here 70% here 30% and slowly i can make my mumbai region down so this is one way where we use the blue green deployment and when we talk about the blue green deployment then what comes in the picture it is the weighted routing policy right this is the weighted routing policy now not necessary that every time that mumbai region should go down right so otherwise also what i can do remember your disaster recovery topic right disaster recovery topic 
this is my disaster recovery region singapore this is mumbai so most 80% traffic is always going to mumbai but maybe 20% traffic i want to go to singapore as well okay so again this is the weighted routing policy okay then comes the failover i think i have already explained you the failover routing policy in failover routing policy it is also known as active passive it is known as active passive failover now what is the concept the traffic will go to the route 53 okay and there will be one active region now let us say this is the mumbai region and singapore is the passive region so singapore initially is not doing anything it is just sitting idle okay no traffic is going to the singapore region 100% traffic is going to Mumbai region. But once the Mumbai region goes down, all the traffic automatically is going to be diverted to the Singapore region. Okay, so you will not have a downtime. You will not have a downtime. So see, this is known as failover. So because Mumbai is not operative, then the traffic has been diverted to the Singapore region. So what the difference between weighted routing policy and the failover routing policy? The next routing policy is geolocation routing policy. Then geo proximity routing policy. Now, what is the basic difference between this policy? Let us see. Geolocation, you must have guessed it. Multi-value answer policy. Even I have shown you this today, right? The, in the NS lookup, Google was having the eight IP addresses. Let us see. So yeah, latency-based routing policy is also there. Now, what latency-based routing policy is do, doing? See, now in latency-based routing policy, what route 53 will do? I am having a route 53, okay? And there is one user from, let us say, India. And there is a user from US. Okay, so one user from India and one user from US. And now I am having two regions. Uh, let us say in one region, Mumbai is there. And another is, let us say, Oregon. So my two web servers are there. So if I have used latency-based policy, what will happen? The request which is coming from the India user will go to the, not to the nearest region. Okay, so most of the time, 99%, what will happen? I will always be connected. 99% chances are there. I will always go to the Mumbai region. But for the time being, just try to understand. So. Now, there is a huge traffic congestion on this route as compared to Oregon. So, it is going to take less time for this user to get connected to the Oregon region other than it, he is getting connected to the Mumbai region. Now, although Mumbai is closer to this user, although Mumbai is closer to this user, but because of traffic congestion, he may have a latency there, right? So, in latency-based policy, user will get connected to that region which is having less traffic on the route. 99%, as I told you, it will always be the Mumbai region because it will be the closer region. It is going to see the hops as well, right? So 99%, it will always be the nearest region, but it may happen that if there is a congestion, you in order to avoid that latency, right, it will just get connected to the region which is having less traffic. So latency based for use when resources in multiple AWS region and I, you want to route traffic to the region that provides the lowest latency. Failover I have already talked about. Geolocation, when you want to route traffic based on the location of your user. Now what I want, if the traffic is coming from India, okay, if it is coming from India, it should always go to this region. If it is coming from US, it should always go to this server, right? So this is location based. So in that case, I can have some other criteria as well. For example, in, if the traffic is coming from India, the currency should be displayed in rupees, let us say. Okay, so maybe uh, some Indian words should be there on the website. If the traffic is, let us say, coming from China, then the website should be displayed in the Chinese. All the currency and everything should be in their language. Okay, so this could be the geolocation routing policy. Geo location routing routing policy. Geo proximity routing policy. Now little bit confusion here, okay, because they look little bit same. So it is based on the location of the user, but it is based on the location of the resources. And optionally shift traffic from resources in one location to resources in other location as well. Okay. So where the resources are located. Depending on that, you will get connected to that resource. Multi-value answer policy, in that case, it is just the round-robbing type of thing. 
and the resources will have multiple answers. Okay. So, this is the example of latency based policy. See, there are two load balancers. The user is there. So, just assume that it is the root 53. So, because this region is far away from that user, taking into consideration his location, maybe. So, he will get connected to the US West 2 region instead of getting connected to Australia, maybe AP Southeast 2 region. Okay, instead of getting connected to Australia, this user uh, for this user, US region is closed. Okay, so this is the latency based policy. This is the blue green deployment I was talking about. So this is weighted routing policy, right? So I have already explained this one to you. Okay, find problems earlier than later. Simulate traffic with load testing. So these are certain website, the grinder, biz with machine guns, so forth. Simple load testing scripts are there for the EC2 instances, okay? So I guess they have used the same scripts uh, for your lab when you are going to test the load on the load balancer. Okay, that's all. Okay, so just a little bit. Okay, so we have completed uh, overview of load balancer here. There is one video. I want you to go through this video and your concept. It is a little bit uh, lengthier one, okay? But still you watch it properly. Lots of things will get more clear. Lots of things will get more clear. Now, let us quickly start with this cloud front. This is the last topic. Okay, we will just cover this. And I will take you through the labs. So, these labs you are going to perform. So, one lab, this is the activity basically. This lab as well as this KC that we are going to do today. today. Cloud front, you will not find it at all difficult. Because at the very beginning, when we, we elaborated the concept of age location, right? So we have already covered this topic. I will even give you demo in our tomorrow session. Okay, let us start. CloudFront is a content delivery network, right? CDN, content delivery network service. Going closer to your customer, right? In this, we are going to see a little bit more about this. Now, CloudFront is a web service that speeds up the distribution of static as well as dynamic web contents, such as HTML, CSS, JSS, and image files. CloudFront delivers content through worldwide network of data centers that are called age location. You recall it? We have taken one example, coffee shop example. So, this is the one. Now, let us say the origin is in Brazil maybe. Origin server is in Brazil and the customer is from China. So, now all the way when she is going to connect to the Brazil region, she may experience, let us say, the latency. So, how to go closer to the customer? You can use the age location. The, this is a worldwide network of a data center, AWS data center. But these data centers are specially meant to cache the contents. So, initially, the age location will be literally empty. Okay. So, let us say this is the age location data center server. Okay. 
and uh, now this is a customer she wants to connect to this server which is in brazil maybe and she is from china so without this age location she has to go to the origin server all the way through the internet okay so she may have the internet issue and the latency issue but if you are having the age location she will get connected to the nearest age location initially nothing will be there okay if this is the first time somebody is ac as accessing that website now again this is the www.xyz.com type of contents here okay this is the first time somebody is accessing it uh, from this region maybe and because uh, this is the first time it is nothing is there then on behalf of her the cloud front service using amazon's own private network fast network will fetch the content from the server and put it in the cache later on let us say somebody else is trying to access the same website so the contents will be directly get served sorry age location cache frequently access data and regional age cache even store the data which is not getting frequently access now see if the contents are not found here so this regional age cache is closer to that this region as compared to the origin okay now it is the brazil and she is in china maybe okay so this regional age cache is part of the china region only so what will happen if the contents are not found here in instead of directly going to the original location what cloudfront will do cloudfront will check it in the regional edge cache the possibility is that it is in the edge cache because uh, regional edge caches store the data which are not getting frequently accessed so it will be closer right again so it will be quickly fetched again and it will be served to the customer second again if somebody is, is else is trying to access the same contents now they are already available in the age location so this is the concept of a cloud front now they are equally suitable for the static content as well as the dynamic content now what can be the origin for this cloud front what can be the origin for this cloud front it can be the s3 bucket as well hosting the static website it can be the ec2 instance it can be the load balancer okay even the load balancer can be the target of the cloud front now see now now see the architecture so we are having root 53 okay root 53 can forward the request to cloud front so just now we have seen that alias record cloud front was also there when i was searching for the bucket cloud front load balancer everything was there cloud front can forward the request to the load balancer load balancer will forward it to the auto scaling group and in turn auto scaling group will forward it to the origin server maybe okay if if it is the auto scaling group target is the server okay but if it is no no auto scaling group there we can even directly use the s3 buckets okay so this can be the origin so this is the architecture root 53 cloud front load balancer and maybe auto scaling group or something or maybe the s3 service now if it is the static website let us say and which is hosted in s3 bucket so we are having that url right http url for accessing the s3 bucket so whenever we were accessing that static website we were directly getting connected to the s3 bucket but what i want i don't want uh, let us say the uh, the s3 bucket is in oregon and the user is 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 from mumbai okay so i don't want that latency to be there so what i can do i can create the age location which is for the mumbai region so now this cloud front service will be there right so mumbai's request will go to the nearest edge location if the contents are not there it will be fetched from the s3 bucket you got it so this is what is going to happen now mumbai oregon and in between we are having the edge location so the the access will be faster and if you remember even i have told you the amazon prime netflix they are all working on this service only cloud front and yes these are the a certain components regional edge cache edge cache and multiple uh, edge locations as well so what is the main intention behind using this low latency that's all we want low latency and we want high data transfer speed especially for movies and something right we don't uh, like that buffering and something right so it should be very quick 
So that is the uh, low latency and high data transfer speed. Cost effective. You pay for the data transfer and request to deliver content to the customer. No upfront and minimum commitments are there for the cloud front service. Not only that, there are multiple services that can be associated with cloud front. For example, I can associate web application firewall over there. I can apply shield over there. So remember these services we have seen in the security module, right? So we can have WAF. We can have shield. Shield is used to protect from DDoS or DOS type of attack. WAF is, is the web application firewall. So for example, SQL injection and some other application level attacks can be uh, protected here. Even this certificate from the certificate manager can be attached over here. Authentication can be done at the C. This, this is very crucial now. Now, let us say there is a S3 bucket. Okay. This is the S3 bucket. Just try to understand this scenario. There is a user and this S3 bucket is, let us say, having some uh, data into it, which the users are purchasing. Okay. So, let us say music or movies or something. But you are also having the cloud. You are also having the cloud. Brand. So, you want only authenticated users should be able to download this object. Only authenticated users should be able to download this object. It is not the public bucket. Okay. It is not the public bucket. But what will happen? Let us say, let us say there are two movies here. Movie 1 and movie 2. This user 1 has purchased this movie 1. Okay. So, maybe it is in the cache. Now, this user wants to access something else. Okay. But once he goes over here, because it is the cache contents, will it be directly available to that user? No. There comes the authentication. Okay. There comes the, if the, if the contents are not free, okay. And you want the authentication even to access the cached contents. Okay. It is, it is not like that because it is already cached. Anybody can access it. No, we can have the authentication here as well. If it is required, if it is publicly accessible, there is no problem. Okay. So you can have it for the entire public, but if it is not like that, you can have the authentication at cloud front as well. Okay. So there are pricing option. I will show you that pricing option as well. So please read it folks. Okay. So I have just taken the high uh, important points from that, but you uh, please go through that entire uh, material. Now, this is a good lab for you. Fail over routing. Okay, so now see what use case we are going to solve over here. So as the name indicate, it is definitely failover, right? So you are going to use the root 53. So here you will actually have a real experience because you know, there are limitation at our side. We don't have any public uh, domain name purchased, right? Uh, there are certain uh, certain websites like Freenom. Okay, I usually use this website, but it is not working since yesterday. I tried it, Freenom, okay? So this free norm is actually going to give you or it gives you free names, free domain names. Okay. I don't trust this website till actually, but anyway, it is okay for a demonstration. Okay. So for example, I want to purchase some domain name. Uh, let us say test.com. Okay. I can check its availability, whether it is available. And these are the DNS servers which this website is using. It's not responding. Maybe my antivirus is blocking the contents from this website. I, I don't recommend you to go for and use this. But yes, if it is just for the don't host your actual domain using this name. But if it is just for the practice, maybe it is, it is quite a good website. Okay. 
so you you can create your account here i have already created the one but it is not responding timely to me okay anyway it will not go there because yesterday also try multiple time but this is the website i wanted to show fine so from there you can purchase or not purchase they are free okay or most of the domain names are free there but if you want a specific domain name maybe only in that case you need to purchase you can use it free for one year okay frank and martha are excited their second cafe is about to open next month it will be in another country near martha's cousin this time frank decides to have the website ready to go for opening day he asks sophia to expand the cafe's global website presence okay so in short now they want their uh, they have they they are going to create their resources in different region something like that because see they are having their new cafe they want the new website for that as well going international with route 53 mato offers sophia a playbook that she can use for troubleshooting issues for amazon route 53 fine these are just the troubleshooting one these are the policies we have seen here maybe you are having one demonstration there showing the policies just to go through that there is one video not here i guess but maybe in the next module they are having one video there okay so let me just go to this activity now now you are going to perform this lab let us go through it whatever we have learned all the advanced concept but using this lab it will be very easy to understand all those things the failover routing policy a uh, creating the record in the dns okay so whatever we have seen today so you are going to apply it okay in this activity you configure failover routing for simple web application the activity environment starts with two ec2 instances that have already been created for you each of the instance has the full lam stack installed and the cafe website deployed and running as well the ec2 instances are deployed in different availability zone for example if the web servers are running you in us west 2 region then then one of the web server runs in 2a and another in 2b okay so instead of using different region they have used different availability zone i guess okay you will configure your domain such that if the website in the primary availability zone becomes unavailable route 53 will automatically fail over application to the instance in the second availability zone see although route 53 can go for multiple region yes it is possible that you can use it in the different availability zones as well so this is what is happening the traffic is coming to your website okay and uh, it is initially going to the availability zone 1 and if that instance goes down and yes we are going to make it down and once it is down the traffic will go to the second instance and this is something which is known as failover which, which it should happen automatically okay we are going to configure the failover routing policy and accordingly it will get connected to the next server so here health check will be a very important point so you should be aware of how to check the health of the servers i will show you it in your tomorrow's session definitely how to create the route 53 health check and so forth but today uh, what happened i don't know my domain is not working there my hosted domain is not working and that is the reason i have i was not able to show you anything there fine so in the first step you are going to create the health check then you are going to create the record as we have seen multiple records but this will be the fail over record this time tomorrow i will elaborate this okay so even you can uh, hold on till tomorrow okay day after tomorrow you can perform this lab if possible you can perform it okay that is not the thing uh, but i am going to show you this entire thing in our tomorrow session fail over functionality how the server is going to fail and exactly what they are going to do here i am going to show you in your tomorrow session including the health check as well. okay 
so that's all folks i i, I guess today is there a kc if it is a kc we are going to complete it yes this is a kc so just uh, complete this kc and we will stop for today Okay. A system administrator wants to create blue-green deployment infrastructure by using Route 53 to gradually phase out the blue environment. Which Route 53 routing policy should he use? Very simple. Green. Yes, it is weighted routing policy. Very good. Which type of scaling policy uses cloud watch alarm and varies the scaling response based on the size of the alarm bridge? Size. Step. Step scaling. Yes. Step scaling policy. Okay. So how, ma how many instances to be created? If it is uh, between 30 to 40 percent of CPU utilization, create one instance. If it is 50 to 60, create two instances and so on. Okay. So, based on the size of the alarm bridge, you create the resource. Which AWS service is content delivery network service? Cloudfront. Which type of ELB should a network engineer use to distribute request to a website running on EC2 instance in a virtual private cloud? ALB. ALB. Okay. Application load balancer because it is for the website traffic. HTTP, okay. And application load balancer uses HTTP, HTTPS type of traffic. Which component of ALB checks for connection request from client? It is listener, right? Application load balancer is having listeners attached to it and listeners listen for the client request. Okay, so the answer is listener here. So listeners are having rule and then listener is connected to the target group and target group is then uh, connected to the actual targets. Okay, fine. So this is the KC folks. Uh, so uh, let us stop for today. Okay. And tomorrow we will proceed with the next topic. Do you have any question? Anything? Yes, let me. I'll explain. It is very simple to understand blue-green deployment. Very simple. See, let us say you are having the production environment and maybe you are having the dev environment. Okay. So, you are having some traffic. Okay. So, up you, these are the applications maybe. And now, what you want, there are two, two situations in which you can handle this blue-green. But usually what blue-green is, blue environment is the current one. So, see, whatever you are developing, initially you are not going to deploy it in the production environment, right? No way. So, you are going to test it and once you are satisfied, then only you are going to launch it in the production environment. So, initially it has to be in the testing environment maybe. So, that is the dev environment. So, now let us say you are having one environment and now you want the traffic to go to the production slowly, initially not. So, this is my blue environment and this will be the upcoming one, production one. So, initially I am testing the traffic over here. Okay, so all the requests from the customers are actually going over here. So, this will not be the real customer, but maybe this is the testing one. So, you are just forwarding 100% traffic over here to check whether this is uh, perfect or not. So, slowly now, you are going to forward this traffic. 
okay so let us say initially you are just uh, sending 10% traffic over here so whatever now actually you can think of it is a load balance load balancer type so what usually the load balancers are doing load balancers are just doing round robbing right one request here one request here one request here one but now what you want whatever the request the load balancer is having let us say now this load balancer is just equivalent to a root 53 just try to understand so now what you want this load balancer you want whatever traffic it is having okay so 90% traffic should go to this server and only 10% traffic should go to this so we can assign the policies to this if it is a root 50 okay but slowly you are going to change it to you just want to test it because this is the new one you don't know whether it is going to handle that traffic okay so you don't want all the production traffic to be directly sent over here that is that risk you want you don't want to take so slowly so if it is working fine with 10 10% traffic then you increase it to 20 then make it 30 so slowly slowly start increasing the traffic and if it is performing properly then you can have the 100% traffic there and you can terminate this environment so this is what is known as blue green deployment it is used in the blue green deployment scenario so uh, lucky let me tell you it is it is there in your lab as so when you are going to perform this lab now you will see that Tomorrow, even I will give you one demonstration on that. Don't worry. Tomorrow, I will explain you once again. Tomorrow, anyway, I'm going to give you two, three demonstration because today it was not possible. The cloud front is there. Tomorrow, a good demonstration will be there. We are going to create the cloud front location. Uh, I will have the origin as the S3 bucket. Initially, I will tell you how to directly S3 website. Hum kaise access kar rahe. Fir hum beach mein cloud front ko laenge. Fir hamara traffic hum cloud front ke paas bejenge. Okay? And how cloud cloud front is going to answer my query using the cached content. So, okay. So, that will be very interesting once. Theory mein sab kuch pada hai. But tomorrow we will apply it practically. Okay. So, and once I've, I'm done with that, all that stuff, root 53 and cloud front and all those demonstration, what I will do? I will start with the containers. Okay, so another interesting topic, but little bit difficult, uh, not to understand, but to implement. Okay, but I will try it very, uh, I will make it very simple for you so that the concept of containers will be very much clear. Not only that, how to implement the uh, concept over here, because here you will not have any lab on containers. So folks, see these, these uh, few topics are little bit challenging now. Okay, uh, containers, Lambda, API. API gateway rest okay so these topics are little bit even the step function so once we are done with this topic these are supposed to be the difficult one uh, containers lambda rest API API gateway as well as step function so once that is done but don't worry even we are not going in that that much detail because that those are the DevOps concept very advanced concept so here we are just going to have a high level overview of that and once that is done you are having the lab as well then the life will become a little bit easy. Okay, so we'll be back to the databases. We'll be back to the networking and some advanced concept of it. Okay, so just bear this one a little bit difficult. Okay, so with this, let us stop. And even lucky, don't worry, I will give you a demonstration of that in tomorrow's session. Okay, so just theoretically, it will not work. If you see it practically, it will be of much, uh, it is much easy for you to understand. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.